Welcome Moon Magic Super Souls. Welcome to today's readings. Now these readings were requested by you. Uh, we have three cards of the lovers. I'm going to be using three different tarot packs. I'll let you know what they are in just a moment. And also some a pendulum, a crystal ball and a beautiful um, crystal heart as well to help to guide you to the right reading. Sometimes it's more than one reading that's speaking to you, but this is kind of like an ultimate soulmate reading really. Now what many of you have requested is a reading for singles. So if you're looking for love or you're looking for a relationship, um, could you have a reading? So I'm. this is really in response to your requests. What I will say though, because it is a relationship reading, it's a soulmate connection and soulmates come in many different shapes and sizes. You know, some of you or the majority of you, I think, will be looking for a love. If you're single, or you're looking for love, then this really is like that ultimate soulmate reading. But um, if you are either single and wanting to remain single, or you're very happily in a relationship, but you might be looking for a different kind of relationship. It might be that kind of soulmate connection to work with, you know, someone to partner with in a working environment. You can use these readings in any of those ways. You'll need to disregard anything that comes up that's very specifically about love and intimacy, but if you're looking for a plutonic relationship or a working alliance, but you know, if you're looking for that match made in heaven, in any area of your world. You could even use these readings to give you information if you're trying to find your kind of tribe, the people that you resonate with. There'll be information and guidance about relationships generally. And the, the way that we're going to do this, so first of all, because it is, it's more about a person than a group of people. So it would be about a, a kind of a strong soulmate connection for many of you, as I've said, most of you, it will be about love about intimacy. We're going to ask about the person. That's the first kind of area we'll look at. We're going to ask about them, their qualities, and where and how you meet as well. What kind of environment that you meet in. Then I'm going to be asking what you personally can do to kind of assist the process in terms of manifesting this connection. And then I'm going to look at timings. Now that's always a little bit tricky because I think our our kind of time-space continuum is very different to that of spirit, to that of source. But I will see whether we can get any kind of indications on timings. Again, it's a general reading, so that might make it a little more tricky, but that's what we're going to be asking for. And then I'll kind of finish up by asking for any additional just general guidance and advice. So, so quite specific kind of way that we're working. So we have three piles for you to choose from. These are the cards of the lovers in each of these packs. This is the Wildwood Tarot. Okay, and this is the card. Let me hold it up so you can have a really good look at it. So the Wildwood Tarot. And as well, we have... Um, beautiful moonstone pendulum as well. Let me just show that to you. So if you like to be guided in by a crystal, this is the moonstone pendulum. Okay, so that is pile one. Oh, they're really fidgety. They really want to get going. Okay, pile two. Um, we are using the Light Seers Tarot. This is the card of the lovers from the Light Seers Tarot. And this is sitting with a beautiful quartz crystal ball. Let me hold that right up to the camera for you. Okay, and then pile three, we have the card of the lovers again from, um, from the Rebel Heart Tarot. So this is the Rebel Heart Tarot, pile three. Okay, and you have a beautiful um, cat's eye uh, 
quartz, it's not a quartz, my apologies, a cat's eye crystal. So this is a cat's eye crystal heart. This is it, what it looks like. Lovely, lovely energy. Okay, so that is pile three. So beautiful souls, um, I'm going to leave the video running just a few minutes longer or moments longer as I usually do, just to give you a little bit of extra time if you just want to really sit and focus in. I mean, if you are single, for example, and looking for love, but also looking for a business soulmate connection, a, a partnership made in heaven, really, you might want to focus on one of those areas first. So really give it your full focus. Uh, and tune into which of the readings is connecting to that person and then come back and focus again, refocus on a different person um, so, so that you can then take advantage of the different readings. And these are timeless readings. You can come to them at any time. So beautiful souls, uh, I'll leave the video running and I will see you in the readings in just a moment. Thank you so much for being here. Hi all one, welcome to your reading. I hope you are all doing really amazingly. Thank you for being here. Now, let's, um, let's draw some cards to see about this person. Let's get some qualities. What is this person like? What kind of a person are, are you being drawn to or is being manifested for you? So your first card, you have the Seneschal. Wow, there's a very wise energy here. Okay, very loyal, very, very loyal. Then you have the card of thought. Yeah, very wise, very loyal, sometimes quite serious actually in their thinking, um, but they do have a lighter side to their character as well. But it's this is somebody who I think, um, I want to say what you see isn't always, um, it's like first impressions, okay, are probably not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? N not everyone will see who they really are at first impressions. They probably have quite a serious sort of side to them. I think they carry quite a lot of responsibility. And because they carry responsibility, I think they have to, you know, by default, kind of, um, it's not exactly wear a mask, but, you know, it's a bit like being a, you know, if you are heading up a, a corporation or something like that, for example, you know, you can't necessarily reveal all, all of the time to everybody because it would put you in, you know, you'd be too exposed. It would be a really vulnerable position to be in. It's not appropriate because it would be like an overspill of your boundaries. That's a better way of saying it. So this is someone I think who takes their responsibilities very seriously. And I think, yeah, they could come across as it's not that they're reticent. I'm trying to really pin this down, actually. It, it, that is the flavor. I think it's exactly what I've said. Because they carry responsibility and they're very conscious of that. I mean, this is somebody, if they work in any kind of um, sort of psychology or the psychiatric field of the work, any sort of psychotherapy, there's a lot of thought involved, areas that involve the mind, or they're a, a tutor, they, they are a teacher, they, stud, they are running study groups. They're very conscious of the well-being of the people who effectively they, they look after, that they oversee. And because of this, I mean, this could be somebody again who has a position in the community. Because of this, they they are very conscious of, of getting it right. So it's not as if, it's not like they're evading anything or hiding anything of themselves. It's just that they need by, by um, to honor their position of responsibility, it's appropriate for them to maintain a certain level of boundaries in, in a public kind of way. What I see here is when they remove the mask, as it were, you know, behind closed doors, they are very, this is a gentle soul, a really, really gentle soul. Oh, wow, your cards are flying out and with so much to give. So even though they may come across as being 
a bit like a, I don't know, let's say it was a, a tutor or something. They come across as being very much in charge of their world. Gosh, sort of at home, they are deeply emotional. Very, this is a very, very deeply emotional person. So let's discover a bit more. Uh, this, this is somebody who's very loyal as well. Once they commit, they are absolutely committed in the same way that they carry responsibility in their job, their world, their working world, and they take a real ownership of that. But very deeply grounded as well, very solid person. For some of some of you, um, I mean, this will be this will be somebody who has quite a strong element of earth in their in their sign, but quite nicely balanced. I'm seeing quite a lot of, I mean, their capacity that this is a very intelligent person, um, which is why they carry that sort of those leadership qualities, those responsibilities. And they can do so. I mean, they can handle it. This is someone with presence. So they're a real thinker as well, um, but also, as I said, deeply emotional. So quite a well-balanced individual chart-wise. I mean, I feel like they might have a, it's quite a strong Capricorn kind of energy because they're very hardworking and maybe some Virgo, quite diligent. Um, but at the same time, there'll be some element in their chart, I would think that is, you know, maybe like the moon in Pisces, something like that. They're, they are, they're very spiritual and they are very, very, very emotional as well very committed. So let's let's find out a bit more about maybe how are you going to meet them or where are you going to meet them? Sort of how and where. Perhaps we'll ask about how first. How does this work? How might you meet them? I'm saying this for you. Okay. And the card from the base is coming out too. So we have Nine of Vessels, Generosity, and Six of Stones, Exploitation. Hmm. I think you might meet them at something like a, almost like a charity event or, you know, something like a, could almost be like a sponsored, a bit like somewhere, like, like going to see an exhibition, for example. And the exhibition is is there to um, to raise money, for example. I am seeing it's, this is somebody who does a lot, really, in the community. So this could be something like a fundraiser, something that they're doing that's outside of their normal job or on top of their normal job. Having said that, it's connected to their normal job because they carry a position of responsibility and a position of leadership. Then it, it's highly likely that you might you know, it will be connected. They would be asked to, to do charity things because of their position. But you're, you're um, or they could be volunteering for something. Very interesting. We have the three of stones creativity. I want to get some clarification or additional information because I'm seeing a kind of a gateway to something. And the page of vessels otter. This is a very playful, very feminine energy, very much connected actually to the similar energy to the Queen of Water. Now, otters know when to play. They play delightfully, but they can also, you know, in fact, interesting, they're very loyal. So, yeah, I, I'm, this is, I'm just seeing different messages. So some of you, I think you could meet through like a charity event, something like that. Others, it could be that you meet them socially at a party because this is about being able to play as well as, um, you know, as, as well as work. There's a real playful energy. For some of you, you could meet this person if you are on vacation or on holiday. There's something very playful here. It's almost like that point where this person has relaxed. So when you meet them, you meet a very different person to the public face. And that's the gateway. Yes, I think you'll see, I think you'll, in, in the way that you connect, you will see immediately um, who they really are. You'll kind of warm to them, you'll recognise, even if it's at a kind of a public, in a public setting. You'll either meet in a group where this person can literally be unwinding, so they really show themselves to you. Or you'll meet in a setting where maybe the public face is there, but you just kind of that moment at a level of soul you recognize this is somebody you could really be with you can connect with as a lover 
as a partner, you could connect with this person. From a business perspective, you'll be like, yeah, this is the ethos that I'm looking for. This is the ethos that resonates with me. And we get more information. Six of Bows, Abundance. Page of Arrows, Wren. So we're asking how and where you meet. I actually think what I feel I'm getting from this actually is that when you meet, um, it's, it's one of those you'll really know it, the, the chemistry is there. It's kind of like all roads lead to, to Rome. It's like the relationship lottery. <laughs> you just think, this is somebody I can connect with. You, Ren's, Ren's um, bond for life. It is one of those meetings where when you meet, you just know it's real. Uh, you, there's no faffing around on this one. You, you just know it's real, three of vessels joy, and you both know it's real, which is really interesting. I don't think there's, there's I feel like there's very little room for insecurity here, which is quite delightful because it's often, in, insecurities can really floor us at the beginning of a relationship. I mean, it's such a human thing if we've had challenges, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing that real strength of connection. This would be I mean, one of those relationships where, when you come together and you meet, that spark is there. You have that sense of loyalty from the moment you meet. There's that sense of, actually, this is the person I really, really want to build something with. And I think both of you will probably, there'll be a level of discussion that means you you kind of, you know, it, it's like meeting somebody if you were on a dating site and seeing several people. The moment you meet this person, you kind of actually know, you'll meet them in real terms. You, you'll, you know that, you know, you kind of want to be exclusive. You're not wanting to sort of continue testing the waters with several different people. You just know this is the person you want to connect with. Now, another message coming through that some of you could actually meet at some form of celebration. So it could be somebody's wedding or engagement, engagement or a christening party with the three of vessels joy. So one of those scenarios where, I mean, lots of scenarios are coming through, but this is a general reading. I must admit, I, I'm not getting the impression that you meet them on a dating site, interestingly enough. I'm not seeing anything of technology coming through here. It all feels much more uh, either out in the world, around people, well, in the world and around people, whether it's like a family celebration, wedding, christening, engagement, or just a chill out, get together with friends, a party where, where you can relax, or yeah, maybe just, just at an event, whatever it might be. I do feel it's out there in some way, shape or form. And I do think you recognize it very, very immediately. It, it, almost to the point where it takes your breath away. It's that, it is that the spark is, is major. Um, I think you'll just know. So where and how do you meet? Hmm. I mean, I think the how and the where are showing through here for us. Let's ask about sort of how it might unfold or a bit more information about, you know, when, I know we're asking about when this might happen, but, you know, let's just get more guidance around this. Um, I'm going to ask the, um, well, I've picked up, an, isn't that interesting? I was going to ask the Akashic Tarot and I've picked up an Oracle pack. The fact that I have instinctively gone to these, we'll use these cards. Okay, so you have the Buried Moon. This is the Hidden Feminine. You have the Sacred Marriage and the Crossroads. Wow, okay. These are big cards. Okay. Okay, so curiously enough, uh, timing wise, we are being given information, but rather than in sort of like weeks, months, that kind of time, it's telling us something about you and your circumstances. So the buried moon, I, I feel this is, especially with the crossroads as well, <coughs> I feel this is, telling us that you you will be at a kind of a turning point in your own life 
Now the sacred marriage, isn't this beautiful? What beautiful um, image this is for you. What is very interesting though, this card really does speak about, and look at the moon again, this card does speak about your life being in balance, a, a balance of the masculine and feminine within you. Crossroads, we're at a turning point here. The buried moon, you know, that the, the feminine was once suppressed, um, indeed still is, um, on many occasions. And th this is about the fact that uh, the feminine rises again. Um, you know, she, the moon is always there. She reveals herself. Um, it, even when we see a black moon, of course, a, a full moon will follow. You might actually meet this person on or around a full moon. I will say that as a, as a generalized timing. That would not surprise me in the slightest. I mean, these are often very big shifts. And, but I think in yourself, the timing of this is when you, at a point when you are at a crossroads, you're at a, a turning point. You're pretty balanced, you're strong in yourself, you know where you are, this could be describing you now. If it's describing you now, it would suggest that this is going to happen fairly quickly. If you are at a crossroads, if, you're, if you are at a turning point, we'll get some more information here for you. But I do feel you in yourself are, I, I think you know what you're looking for as well. You've, you're not in that sort of, <clears throat> that kind of place of, almost like just wanting to meet just anyone. I, I, I'm not, that hasn't come out quite right, but uh, it's like you're really, you are really discerning. That's what's coming across. You're at a point, and you probably are here already if you've been attracted to pile one. You're very discerning. You would really, really, you're really happily staying single, or it's like you're waiting for the right person rather than thinking you could go out there and date a lot of people. I suspect many of you have turned away actually or met people and thought this isn't right, I'm, I'm moving on from this. You're in a balanced place and it's when you're at that point of balance that this person comes into your world because you're, you're attracting this like, like a magnet, okay? Let's get more information, more guidance. Can we have more guidance around this? Timings and general general advice you've got first house arrival this would suggest that this this person may be coming into your world fairly soon actually it could also indicate that arrival point where you arrive at a point in yourself where you are confident clear you know what you want again i think you're immersed we've got a full moon here i think you're pretty immersed in your world being you in a really full amazing way I almost feel you're not necessarily out there looking for a relationship. We have Saturn, structure. What's that Capricorn kind of energy coming in again here? Maybe we have advice and guidance about the coming semi-square quincux tension. Look at this. And we're at the crossroads. Mm. Back to a turning point here. Yes, yeah, so I, I do think that you will, if, if any of you are in the process of moving or relocating or changing your job or, uh, you know, and you're in that space of, of structure being changed, of stuff being changed, I think that's the point. It could even be part of the environment where you meet this person um, or, or moving somewhere and you get invited to something social because you've moved and you're out meeting new people. It's almost this point of, it is a point of tension where there's a massive shift for you. You may even be in a place where you're thinking, I don't know which way to go where there are choices open to you, but you're not actually sure which choice to take. And, and that's the point when you kind of meet this person. But I do feel you'll be very immersed in some aspect, well, of, of your world, rather than, almost rather than being out there looking. And then it's, it's as if this person is just revealed to you. 
So timing wise, this feels much more circumstantial around you than sort of factual time or linear time as we see it. Let's now get some just general advice and guidance about what you can do to help this process forwards. Is there anything you yourself can actually do? Is there anything that pile one can actually do? New beginnings, 0909, great chance, opportunity, courage, accomplishment, endings, conclusions, big love. Wow. Look out for an opportunity that might be a game changer. You are completing something major. It's the turning point. Couldn't write it, could you? It feels good to level up. Yes. Close the old chapter. A new adventure will unravel. So this is absolutely at a turning point for you. This is when you meet this person. So it's when something new is unfolding, unraveling and it's you seizing an opportunity to embrace something new whatever that may be and it's at this point of seizing the new opportunity so new beginnings look out for an opportunity that might be a game changer so it's not necessarily an opportunity that you might associate with a relationship it could be joining joining something or doing something or an activity or in, that's a new job there is a turning point and it's around this shift from sort of thinking I'm not doing this anymore you know I'm done with that I'm moving to that and it's at that point of shift literally it's like uh there's there's like a collision um even though this says tension what I'm seeing here in this card it, it's like this moment of you literally you run into each other it's like a it does it feels like a collision you're you're on a collision course and when you take that new opportunity you you literally run into each other. That's what I'm seeing here. Okay, general advice and guidance. I mean, that's what you can do to help the process. It couldn't be clearer, actually. It's like do things, seize opportunities, take any chance that comes along. Um, let go of anything um, that isn't really working for you because then it makes space for big love. And this is really it. Look out for an opportunity that might be a game changer. So if you're offered a promotion or you're, you're doing something, you're reaching yourself into the world in some way that is personal to you and your world as it stands, it closes an old chapter. It lets go of an attitude. It lets go of anything or something that, that, that that's the shift. And that's when you meet this person. Let's just wrap up the reading and ask for just some general advice and guidance. May we have some general advice and guidance for pile one, please? General advice and guidance. In fact, yeah, we'll draw from this pack. I'm actually feeling... No, this isn't feeling right. Okay, I'm going to draw from a different pack. I'm going to... Um, just going to use some sort of love oracle cards, actually, to see what we're shown here. Yeah, this is feeling more like it. Okay, so reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. So this could be a past life connection, that I will say. Uh, for some of you, this is someone you have known before. You've, just, you've actually agreed that you would collide in time at this point, at this moment. Children, your love life is being affected by children. So it could be that if you are wanting children, that this person will also want children. Um, if you have children or this person has children, um, that could also be um, coming into play. I'm also being shown here, actually, if this is from a past life, you may have known one another when you were children in a past life. A very strong message coming through, so this will be relevant for some but not all. A, a past life connection, what I'm being shown is um, you really were almost like childhood sweethearts actually in a past life. And I think you were wrenched apart. Perhaps your families moved apart um, and, and, you know, at a time when travel wasn't as it is now, where we just jump on a plane and go somewhere and we keep in touch or we, you know, we FaceTime. That was not an option. And you were wrenched apart, I feel, as I think you were almost those childhood sweethearts. Okay, let's get some more information, guidance, general guidance information here. Look at this, <laughs> past life connection. Okay, this just feels like a rubber stamp, a confirmation. You've known one another before. And yes, this is your soulmate. So just a lot of affirmation coming in here for you, I feel. 
Okay, any more general guidance and information that we can get here? Any more general guidance and information? Lessons. Love teaches us many lessons. Okay, I think you'll grow together. Um, there's no doubt about it. Limbo. Seek clarity on mixed signals. And we have compromise is not submission. I think this is more talking about back to the turning point for you, actually. Um, this is what I'm being shown here. In more general terms, that crossroads for you, um, the ending, completing something major. It's this point where you are solidly yourself. You're not prepared to put up with something anymore. I think you've been through many lessons um, that... I won't say it kept you in limbo, but I think you've had many life lessons to go through to sort of be ready for the strength of this connection, for this reconciliation. Probably both of you, I suspect. I don't think it's one-sided, actually. But I do think uh, the energy has been in limbo um, while you've, in terms of meeting this specific person, this soulmate, I think the energy has been in limbo while you have been learning life lessons, but you, you're there now. And this is the turning point. It's the point where you're like, you know, enough is enough. I won't accept that. I won't accept the unacceptable. I won't tolerate certain things. I know what I want and I'm very clear. And it's not about that you won't compromise, but compromise should be, you know, if you're going to get a takeout, you know, you're going to get a Chinese or a pizza, it shouldn't be compromising who you are. And this is a relationship that will support who you are. I do think you've absolutely known one another, and I do see for many of you being wrenched apart, you were childhood sweethearts. And this is a coming back together. Beautiful souls. Um, I feel this is all that's going to be given today. This is the turning point when you meet this person. Beautiful souls, uh, if this is not an intimate relationship, but it's a business partnership or a colleague or, um, you know, a, a kind of a, a person that will assist you in being a part of a community that you really want to be, but a key person, then, you know, the energy still applies. It's at that point where you kind of decide enough is enough over something <clears throat> and you step forward, you take a risk, you think, do you know what, that looks like a great group to join, you know, and, or, you know, that's somebody I could approach for work. That This is about meeting something where you're it's like going to a job interview and and choosing choosing a different job applying for something and and then you go you meet that so so i think the soulmate connection is absolutely present in any kind of relationship but i know most of you will be looking for this for love beautiful souls if this is kind of sitting with you resonating with you i always feel with a reading like this where we're looking at something that hasn't yet happened that you know if it resonates with you because it just sits with you. It kind of sings to your soul. Whereas actually, if you are, you know, you, you, I think we just know instinctively. So if this is resonating with you, beautiful souls, I am thrilled for you. Um, seize every opportunity um, and keep us posted in the comments, beautiful souls. You can always come back to a reading and let us know. Or let, if you're following my readings, I post readings every Sunday for weekly guidance, immediate messages that you need. And we look at the week ahead. And um, if you're new to my channel, that's what I do on a Sunday. And then uh, usually on a Tuesday and a Friday, I post a different kind of reading. It could be astrologically connected. It could be um, to do with the moon. It could be a, a question like a soulmate reading. I, I'm and I will continue doing the monthly relationship readings as well. Um, beautiful souls, thank you. So many of you really appreciated that that most recent one. So, yeah, so I do lots of readings and lots of shorts in between. So if you're new to the channel and you want to make sure you never miss a reading, if you subscribe and press the little bell icon, they should come into your stream. And yeah, keep us posted. Let us know in any of the, um, any of the videos. Um, it is really, really super lovely to hear of your stories. You guys are amazing. You're so inspirational. Now, I can't reply to all your comments because there are too many and, you know, thank you. Um, but I do read them and truly I am blown away by just who you are as people. You are remarkable. So thank you so, so much for being a part of the Moon Magic Tarot community. Uh, you know, it really is a beautiful 
beautiful energy that you bring here. So thank you, um, beautiful souls. Enough of my waffling. Uh, tons of love, super souls. I am so, so, so um, thrilled for you because this feels, oh, it, it's like it's got the depth that you're really, really looking for. Tons of love, pile one. Pile two, welcome to your reading. You've chosen the Light Seer's Tarot and this beautiful crystal ball. Let's ask straight away um, about the person. What kind of person is this? What are their qualities? Um, can we get information about this person to help you to be guided in? Now, this is interesting because this did come out in pile one as well, the thought card. So if you were drawn to pile one, two, there may be information for you. We have the Queen of Earth. We have the Father. Okay. And we have um, the Three of Fire. Okay, this person is, they're very outdoorsy. This is a seriously outdoorsy kind of person, you know, non-gender specific, but this is somebody who is passionate about the environment. They're very adventurous. They're, they're out there. They're kind of um, almost like they are, they are far more comfortable if they're sort of out out in nature than if, I mean, this is not somebody who does an office job or if they do, that's not really their bag, you know, they're doing it under duress. This is somebody who prefers to be outside, they're on the land. Very good craftsman, actually. I'm seeing somebody who can use their hands. Um, very good thinker, a very, very deep thinker as well. A very, very deep thinker. This is somebody who likes to create, likes to build things likes to make stuff, could highly likely that this could be somebody who is actually self-employed rather than employed. I sort of said if they were doing an office job, I think they'd be doing it under duress. Likewise, character-wise, whatever their working world is about, I think they very much prefer to be their own boss. So they could be self-employed managing their own time scales. I think very successful at what they do, but they've never lost their kind of youthful spirit. They've never lost their, their passion, their drive. This is somebody who's very motivated. When they know what they want, they're prepared to go for it. Um, absolutely, wholeheartedly. This is someone with a lot of energy, um, a lot of passion. But yeah, great deep thought, a very philosophical um, in, in terms of their perspectives as well. And a very balanced perspective I'm seeing here actually, with both the Queen of Earth and the Father. Uh, this is somebody who has very strong family values as well. You know, these things really matter, providing, they're a good provider. You know, this may not be what I would call an intellectual high flyer, but this is somebody who's grounded, they're a good provider, they want to provide for their family, they want to provide the, you know, the, the everyday stuff, you know, the, the kind of the, the house and the, the put, putting food on the table, being there, um, so you know, very, very interesting. Quite a strong masculine energy. Now this could be, um, this is non-gender specific, but whoever this person is, they are very much in touch with both, I would call the feminine nurturing side of themselves, but also the masculine as in um, being motivated and being out there, wanting to, wanting to give, wanting to contribute, wanting to provide. Yeah, so quite an adventurous kind of soul here. And it is interesting, I do get quite a strong element, so very much, you know, it, what, irrespective of gender, very much in touch with their, with the masculine side of their, of their being, and yet they hold it in balance as well here. You know, I do see a balance, they're, they're able to think things through, so they're not a, a, a bull in a, sh a china shop, even though they're quite adventurous, quite spontaneous. This isn't somebody who's a bull in a china shop and just tears off after something in a flighty sort of way. This is somebody who is, you know, solidly thinking about what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it. And, you know, they have, if they do something, they do it because 
they've thought it through and they want to do it and it matters to them. Really strong values coming through here. Let's get some information about kind of how you might meet or where you might meet this person. We have the wheel. Okay, that's interesting. We have the Hierophant. Wow, big cards. We have the Six of Swords. We have the Ace of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. Justice, Four of Pentacles. Okay, so much as in, I would say, in Pile 1, this is a general reading, and so various different kind of scenarios are coming through. Okay. Firstly, I do need to say that this is guided. I mean, I, mean, I suppose in many ways, most soulmate relationships are. But... I think you are more likely to meet um, at work than in a social setting. I think you're far more likely to meet at work. Um, or if, it, if it's to do with, if it's not at work, I think it will maybe be, uh, you know, processing something where contracts are involved or, you know, there's some sort of negotiation going on. Yeah, how and where. Yes. If for some of you, this could be a long distance connection where you do actually meet somebody um, and they're, they are, they're not living immediately close to you. And so in a way, some negotiation will be involved as to how you kind of make this happen. Having said that, this person's adventurous. So this person is probably willing to up sticks and potentially move, I think, to make this work. Once this person commits, they commit. But they'll think about it. This isn't someone you can hurry. You can't speed this forwards. This wouldn't be a connection that you can make. make you, you're not going to be able to make it happen fast. Once they commit, they'll commit. But, and they'll do so solidly. You know, they'll never want to let you go, ever, 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 ever. But they almost have to sort of, this is the kind of person that has to sort of adjust to get to where they need to be first. They've got to think about it. They've got to be read. They've got to be ready. They do it in their own time. You can't push this. You, you can't, you know, if you meet this person and he or she, you think this is, you know, definitely, you know, the, the, the person I want to be with, you've got that connection and you're singing that song, they're going to need to sort of reach that point where it's very much their choice. You know, they, it, it feels like they are a self-made person. So I sort of said, I think they're quite likely to be self-employed rather than employed by somebody. Or if they are employed, they'd possibly the, be the employer. But although I don't see massive sort of, um, I, I just see them being very much in charge of their own decisions and it matters to them. I mean, it may be actually, you know, in childhood that they've they had to take on responsibility or independence at quite an early age, actually. And so as a consequence, you know, that they're on, they're kind of on top of things, but they, they do need to make choices for themselves. They need to feel that they are in charge of the choices that they want to make and do so. But once they commit, they're there wholeheartedly. I do think this is someone who, the where and how, part of the where and how, I'll try and draw more cards for you, but part of the, the where and how feels to me as if somehow it's needing to like it could be a little bit of a slow burner and I don't I don't think the strength of feeling is is slow I think the passion's there it's just that they have to sort of percolate it really think it over and reach a point where they are confident in themselves that this is right because I don't think this person commits easily but when they do commit you know they they will never let you go so so this is why they're just somebody who's who's steady in this that there's a process to go through and it may be that their own circumstances need to be 
they are processing something in their own circumstances before the, they're, they're fully available. They'd be very solid in that way. If they weren't fully available, they would process what they were doing first before then kind of coming to you. Okay, let's draw some additional cards. Can we get a bit more information about the where and how? I mean, I see maybe, you know, something of a, of a work connection, but I also feel this is also about how they commit to, to something. May I ask? The crossroads. This came out in pile one, two. How fascinating. Cave incubation. Yeah, this is definitely somebody who needs to process this. The sacred marriage. This came out in pile one as well. Wow. It is such a beautiful card. I will just show it up to you because I think it is really just such a gorgeous image, I think, to, to hold in your mind in terms of, of, again, this really strong connection. There's, there's a longevity here. Now, what did come, come out in part? I don't want to dive too much into pile one, but if you were drawn to it, I think it may be worth looking at that. I I feel that this is yeah I for some of you you could already have met this person okay and maybe you went your separate ways or it's been a bit of a slow burner so you're not really sure you're you're single and you're thinking I'm looking for my soulmate and and I you know almost as if you're sort of like you're giving up on this a little bit um something didn't work out you've you've moved beyond it i do think for some of you it could be someone coming back into your life maybe they've had to go away and deal with some stuff first before they were ready to commit it's like they're they're, they're quite diligent in their own world i think they've got to mull it over a lot so for some of you i do think you could have met this person and it just for you has felt like you know it was amazing the chemistry was beautiful and good but you know what for whatever reason you've parted company or it could be distance keeping you apart but I get the impression that there's been a withdrawal somehow from one or other of you actually and yet somehow the, the connection was very 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 strong Let's get some more um, information about this. Could we have some clarification about this? Yeah, retrograde review. I, I do feel this is, is this has happened actually. For some of you, this is somebody who you you actually did meet. And somehow it didn't kind of, on review, you didn't think it was really going to work or they didn't or they were taking their time, they weren't ready to commit. Neptune, vision, and yet you've never lost sight of that, that sort of vision of potential. If this was a long distance connection, or indeed if, if for some of you this, this is not someone you've met, this is a general reading, I think if you haven't met them yet, then when you do, I do think that they, they are quite likely to be somehow immediately unavailable. Okay, so you would be being asked in this reading, I think, in the guidance to be very mindful. If you meet someone and you think, well, they're not really available, it doesn't mean that they won't be available. I'm not seeing any kind of dishonesty or dishonor in, in, in that way. Um, but I think that they would, they will come to you when they're ready. Yes, absolutely. I, I think collaborate. Likewise, if you met this person through work, you might find that they will really take their time to process how they feel about you, to review everything, because they'll be conscious of the consequences of those boundaries. You know, they're very clear about contracts and, you know, sort of working together and not working together. They're very conscious of boundaries and those kinds of areas. So, you know, they'll think, they'll think this through before they come forward. But a conjunction alliance i mean this it it will happen it will absolutely happen so we, this is very very interesting very clear messages so it, it may not be someone you've met already but when you do meet them i think 
the circumstances are not going to be immediately supporting you to come together. There's a process, an incubation period. And for some of you, this is someone you've parted company with. And in many ways, you're in the incubation period because something else is going on that needs to be addressed and sorted first. But you will, you know, this does come together, the conjunction, the alliance. Again, it could be a member of your team. So I, I, I strongly suspect you might meet through some kind of a working arrangement because there's collaboration, there's, you know, a shared vision, there's conjunction, there's, there's a, I, I do feel you might work together or come together in a, prof, through a, through a professional route. That would be the best way of describing this, my beautiful pile two. Let's get more information about, you know, what you can do to, to help this process and general timings. So in terms of timings, divine intervention, high vibes, prosperity, big ventures, fated events, faith, purpose, higher calling. Love or other happiness lurks just around the corner. It will be something much better than in your wildest dreams. A rare opportunity, an exciting encounter with like-minded people will exceed your expectations. Yes, so I feel you might be in an environment where you could be following your calling or... Um, yeah, it, it, there's something about work and purpose and teamwork and connections, but divine intervention is going to bring you together. Divine timing will bring you together. So you're being asked to have faith. So if you have met somebody and you're thinking, well, it can't happen because of the parameters, the boundaries, I think it has to percolate. There's a process of incubation. But yeah, a rare opportunity, an exciting encounter with like-minded people. So I do feel you'll be in, envi in an environment of very specifically of people. And I do feel this is showing us that it's, if it is a community thing um, or a friendship group, it will be, you'll be coming together with purpose. It wouldn't just be a sort of a friends chilling out or, or popping out for a drink. It would be friends getting together with a purpose. You're gonna do something together. You, you're meeting up with purpose. You're, you're setting up a group or you're meeting together because you want to do stuff. There's, there's something here, or, or indeed it's a work scenario. So let's ask about um, if there's anything you can do, additional information to help this process, or is it simply down to divine timing? Okay, make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take, so you will need to do something here. Right, free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. Okay. Codependency, addictions are affecting your romantic life. And unrequited love. It's interesting there's not enough attractional chemistry to keep this relationship going. Right. It could be that for some of you, you have someone around you already and you might be thinking, oh yes, this is the one but it might not actually be the one. Or it could be for some of you that you are in a position where you're, in your own mind, you, you, you get yourself into, let's say when something doesn't progress, you get yourself into a kind of a thinking pattern where you um, lower your own vibes. Let's get clarity around this. Is, that, is this something that, what is it you're needing to free yourself from, make the effort? I mean, it may also be, because this person is very adventurous, it may be that, you're, that part of being in the right zone for this relationship is that you're needing to sort of give them space to, <coughs> excuse me, space to fly. It doesn't mean they're not loyal. Once they commit, they fully commit. But they've kind of got to do it themselves. It may be that what we're seeing here is, you know, when you might think that there's a the way in which a relationship will unfold, that it will just happen. And as it unfolds, you know, you commit quite quickly. And I, I'm not sure. I think this person has to get to that space for themselves. 
Here we get more information about codependency, unrequited love. We've got the High Priestess and the Four of Cups. Okay, what I am actually seeing here is that I think you have been previously disappointed. Actually, quite genuinely disappointed. Felt you've been feeling quite stuck. And so when you meet someone that you like, there's, there's a keenness to move it forwards quite quickly. But actually, the person we're seeing here is somebody who wants to take it steady. They want to feel very much in charge of their own choices. And so in a way, I think the guidance here is about recognizing, I think it's almost like freeing yourself from any personal inhibitions. Take control back of your own life. Don't let go of your own life. Don't dive in and attach so quickly that then when this person is taking their time, you feel that it's not happening quickly enough and you feel it's unrequited when actually it might not be. It might actually be that, you know, your, your own kind of um, fears and concerns about being disappointed again have been triggered and so actually what's important here is to recognize that you can do the internal work free yourself from that make an effort to really hold firm on allowing this relationship to unfold and it reminds me of um i think it's carhill gabran the prophet and he talks about the you know the winds of heaven um, flowing between you. In fact, I'm just going to, um, you won't know, I'm going to press the pause. I'm going to grab that book and read it to you. It's beautiful. Okay, so I have gone and got the prophet. Um, so then Almitra spoke again and said, and what of marriage, master? And he answered saying, you were born together and together you shall be forevermore. You shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days. A, you shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness and let the winds of heaven dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone, even as the strings of a lute are alone, though they quiver with the same music. Give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping, for only the hand of life can contain your hearts. And stand together, yet not too near together, for the pillars of the temple stand apart, and the oak tree and the cypress grow not in each other's shadow. Now what I feel from this, I'm not suggesting in any way that this is not a committed connection because I see it as being a very committed connection. Once this person commits, they commit a thousand percent. They will never want to let you go. But they need to get there of their own volition. They need to be ready for themselves. You can't push it. And what you can do is actually make sure that you are still walking your own pathway and not interpreting something that could be a slow burner as a lack of, as, as being unrequited love, not getting into a space of, of sort of sadness, despondency. This needs to sort of unfold organically in its own time. When this person is ready, they will commit. So this is really just, I think, some quite solid advice around and guidance around the way this may unfold. I will ask a little bit about timings. Although we're showing much more about how this, you know, emerges and evolves. But may we ask please about timings, maybe about how soon this might happen. Okay, we have expectations, have realistic expectations. Okay, afraid, it's time to let go of any insecurities. That's not feeling right. Curiosity is the card that's showing up and new beginnings. Okay, so let's put our cards down and how interesting yeah uh, this is really reinforcing um 
I suppose what you can do to help this, actually, to help this process, if we think that we are in a process of creation all of the time, of co-creating with the universe, though we're not always terribly conscious of it, what this is, uh, your reading is saying, is, is really there is a need to, with this particular person, recognise that they have to reach this point in their own time. And actually the energy that you can emit, your high vibes, are about freeing yourself from any fears and insecurities, really being curious, getting out there in the world, um, allowing, uh, allowing this to unfold, discover the person without any pressure, learn to be curious about each other, hold your vision of what you desire looking forward to a new beginning, because everything in your reading is saying this will come, the commitment will come, that connection will come. It's just that it has to unfold in that sort of, in that way. And I think, so for some of you, if you've already met this person, I do think for some of you, they're coming back in. You, you may well know who this is. If you haven't yet met this person, I think when you do, it, the circumstances around them may mean that they're not immediately available or they've just simply got to, you've got to let them get there on their own, as it were. Let's just ask for any more indication of timing. But let me just get another little tarot pack. Could we have any indication of timing around, in, in our, our kind of linear timing? In terms of actually meeting this person or if they're coming back into your life, when they're coming back in, let's just follow this through. Okay, so we have the Eight of Swords. We have the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, you're not going to see this coming. This is really interesting. I'm seeing this one, Page of Pentacles. I'm seeing this, Knight of Pentacles. I did say I thought you might meet them at work and this is really coming through. Again, I mean, look at this, Ten of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, and I've taken them out of different parts of the pack and they have just come out in order. There's divine timing around this. Absolutely divine timing. I almost feel like just when you kind of think it's not going to happen, <laughs> this is the point when it happens. Yeah, I, I'm just going to say divine timing. We're not to be shown as well, I think, with the Eight of Swords, the exact timing. But what you are being shown is that it will run very smoothly. When Even though it's it's got to build and grow organically, it will go from strength to strength You'll, very, very quickly. There'll, there'll be a solid moving forward. So, so it's not like nothing's going to happen. It, it's just that there is, I think you're in a gestation period now, actually. I think that's what's happening. And the key here is to free yourself from any concerns, fears that nothing, this isn't going to happen. That's the kind of personal work that you can do. I do think it comes through some sort of work setting. And then we have the three of wands. Yeah, it's kind of as if by magic. This will be divine timing for you, beautiful souls. There's no question of it. There is timing involved here. Your work, if you like, your personal work to make this move forwards as quickly as possible is to free yourself from any kind of insecurities that are holding you back. And I do think it, it is it potentially in a, in a working environment that you meet this person. And so, you know, just trust be focused in your own world. Don't worry about this. Just, I, I think this is like trusting. And the more you trust, because fated events, I mean, this is divine timing, faith, purpose, higher calling. So as long as your life is on track and you are having faith and, and holding those high vibes, I think you'll then meet that person because it's definitely connected to some element of, you know, it, it says love or other happiness lurks just around the corner. It's a rare opportunity, an exciting encounter with like-minded people will exceed your expectations. And look at that, we have the card of expectations. So I think this is about putting yourself in, in the right time, place, the right attitude within you and also the right... Um, location almost, like being on track in your own life. If you're on track, this will happen. 
pile two. I feel this is all I have for you. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the reading. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and do like, share, subscribe. If you want to make sure you never miss a reading, if you subscribe and press the little bell icon, hopefully you'll never miss one. I post readings every Sunday for weekly guidance, immediate guidance. And then on Tuesdays and Fridays, usually I post a, another reading, a pick a card reading like this, where we ask specific questions. Uh, so um, beautiful souls, if this is a, a working relationship that you're looking for, uh, again, you may need to just um, you get yourself in the right zone. It's, it's not necessarily for all of you about love, although for most of you, I suspect it will be. So, um, but this is, if this is a working alliance, it's going to be unbelievably successful. You know, you've got to put yourself in the right position um, put yourself in the right sort of networking groups, go out to those um, events where you meet the right people, because once you're in that environment, you know, we're seeing the page is so full of promise and then an offer coming to you, Knight of Pentacles. You know, it enables you to begin to manifest a very different future. So, yeah, pretty, however we look at it, this this will happen. It's just there's a process of gestation, I feel, around you. And your shift is your own energy and staying on track. Pile to tons of love, beautiful souls. Um, thank you so, so much for being here. It's such a, a privilege to read for you. Um, and I'm thrilled that this is going to happen. It's, it's, it's coming through for you. It is just about holding that faith and yes, recognizing that divine timing is involved. Tons of love, pile two. Um, I so look forward to seeing you for some other readings if this is resonating with you. Um, tons and tons of love, beautiful souls. Yeah, and keep us posted as well um, in either this reading or in the comments, but or other readings as well. Um, and thank you so, so much, all of you who give back through the super thanks in the comments and all of you who just comment. You are amazing. It's wonderful to read um, what's happening in your worlds. You know, you're so inspirational. Uh, pile two, tons of love. Pile three, welcome to your reading. You've chosen the Rebel Heart Tarot and the beautiful green Cat's Eye Heart. Now, let's ask about this person. What are their qualities? What kind of person are they? Let's discover a bit more about them. You have the Seneschal. This is interesting because this came out in uh, one of the other readings, pile one, I believe. They're very loyal, very, very loyal choice yeah very loyal very fair okay they are we have the card of the counselor so uh we also have the queen of earth okay how interesting right mm. i feel this person is almost like a bit of a pillar of the community if that makes sense um they have really, really strong values, strong moral values. Um, they, they may well be involved in some kind of legal profession where they uphold people's choices, justice, that kind of thing. They're very, very compassionate. Uh, mm, Queen of Earth. I think they're actually quite successful, if I'm honest, as well, really. I think this is somebody who has done well for themselves in their own world. And I want to say they know it. I think they, and I don't mean that in an ego, arrogant way. I'm not seeing anything like that. In fact, far from it. This is quite possibly somebody who had, has faced really quite big challenges um, probably in their childhood and maybe in uh, as they have navigated their life. You know, this is definitely an older soul, uh, somebody who has come here to at a level of soul to really work, and they've done the work. So this is this is somebody who's yeah, processed a lot of stuff. I think possibly had a very very difficult upbringing potentially. But what's interesting is they're one of those people that has come through something with a determination to make a difference. And I think they do make a difference. This is someone, whatever profession they're in, could be a legal profession where they're upholding 
justice and rights and sort of like fighting for the underdog. It could be psychotherapy, counseling, some form of healing profession. But whatever they do, they are very good at it. They could be one of those people who is integrating what I would call sort of science and spirituality. But they're doing it differently and because they choose to. So their values are very, very, very important to them. Their core inner values will be upheld um, over and above anything. For some of them, they may even be a speaker. They may be seen publicly. The kind of person who, in fact, I would venture to say they're not afraid to speak out. That's what's coming through here. This is not someone who's afraid to have a voice. These are big cards. And yet they come from a place of deep, deep compassion, deep awareness. They know that things need to change. They want to see changes. They want to see transformation. And they are prepared to step up and make a difference where they can. Yeah, they are not afraid to have a voice. They're not afraid to speak out. How interesting. A lot of integrity here. Let's talk about... Um, maybe where and how you might meet. Could we have an indication, please, for pile three of how this they might meet this person? Where might they meet this person? So we have the card of strength. Okay. We have the card of justice. How interesting. I was just thinking if any of you are involved in fighting for the underdog, um, that's where you might meet this person. Or indeed, if, if you have not been okay, this person could come into your world and be uh, somebody who's stepping up and supporting you. But you have a shared common interest here in this, this strength, in, strength and justice. Let's see what else. How and where might you meet? Two of Cups. I think you do share a common cause. So if you do any kind of charity work, we have the emperor. I just feel this is something, something you're going to come together because you share, you share um, a, you know, a common cause or a passion for something, something that matters to you. I mean, it could range, it, this is a personal, this is not a personal reading. So I was about to say this is a general reading. So you're going to need to, um, you know, adapt this or, or listen to this in terms of what's important to you. But if you think about what is important to you personally, you know, are you passionate about um, organic gardening? Are you passionate about, um, you know, saving the planet? Are you passionate about helping people to make choices? Are you passionate about um, helping people who have, you know, who, for whom some injustice has been caused. There's something that is that you are passionate about personally, that you feel really strongly about. And it's through that something that you feel strongly about that this comes out or this relationship happens and this is the place you meet. Ten of Pentacles, yeah. It is. It's like uh, it, it is like finding your your community, your tribe, the people that you resonate with, and of course, this person is part of that because they resonate the same with the same. They share the same beliefs. They share the same passions. You could be meeting somebody who is part of your spiritual family if you are part of your goes to the same church. Uh, it, it could be any of these things, but there's something that really matters to you that is important to you and, and you will share that common ground. Yeah, three of cups. <clears throat> You'll share the same values. You literally wear the same hat, almost. I feel you meet on quite equal terms as well, which is quite interesting. In terms of your desire and your passion, the sun, I mean, this is beautiful because the sun sometimes indicates a relationship, a connection that's of a higher, um, higher minded connections, higher minded relationships. It's a card of happiness. It's a card of coming together. Yeah, you, you are both, interestingly enough, this is the rebel heart. I feel like you're both rebels with a cause. Partners in crime. 
You know what matters. And I think for you, you're not you're not afraid to say what matters, to step up and say what matters and to be prepared. I suspect some of you, there's a mirror here in this in this person with you. I suspect some of you have also had really tough times, perhaps a tough upbringing. You've had to step up and um, make choices that in many ways a child perhaps should not have had to have made. But yeah, I do feel this is this is a very guided connection. This is where you meet in your strengths. In some ways, you are a power couple, actually. And I think part of the power, I don't mean necessarily in abundance in the world. That could be the case for some of you. You could really do the most amazing things with the Queen of Earth. You could really manifest. But I feel like you've come here to do something here, um, to be united, partners in crime, to make a difference. And I think you can. I think you can and you will make a difference to many people. So let's get more information about this connection. So I feel this is where you're going to meet or how you're going to meet is through something that is really passionate and important to you. Let's get a little bit more guidance and advice. May we have guidance and advice for pile three, please. This has come out. I think this is fascinating. I love this card. Just look at the image of this pile three. This has come out in every single pile. I mean, what a blessing. You know, this is the ultimate soulmate reading and we couldn't have a greater blessing from this card showing up for pile one, pile two, and now pile three. Absolutely amazing. So this is really meant to be. I mean, this is such an affirmation. We have Seridwen, the initiator. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I might get the book out and have a quick look and see. And then we have shape-shifting. Yeah, because you guys are transformative. Both of you, I suspect, at a level of soul, have come here to make a difference. There's no question of it. You have come here to initiate change, to create change, and actually... This is something, you know, two halves are better than, better than one, however it works. You are, you can do this. You can work together, you can support each other. You know, this can happen. If you're not looking at this reading f for love, but you're looking at it for other purposes, then, you know, I think it's about finding someone who sings from the same page as you. That is amazing. Let me just check and see how I pronounce it. Okay, it doesn't actually tell me how to pronounce it, but what I will do is just read you the little story because I think it's exactly what we have already been hearing in this reading. In the old Welsh story of the enchantress Seridwen, she chases Gwionbach, a young boy who has consumed three drops of potion from her cauldron of inspiration, a potion which she herself brewed and which she intended for her son. Her long pursuit of the boy makes it possible for him to discover and draw on the new knowledge that he's acquired in order to shapeshift to try to escape her. But the dark goddess cannot be eluded. Finally, after submitting him to the tests of his newly acquired prowess, Seridwen catches Guionbach, swallows him up and rebirths him as Talisen, sounds like talisman, who became the greatest of all prophets and bards. So this is... Um, a, really a story all about transformation. This is your common ground. Both of you are, you're like, a, you, you have a mirror here because you've both gone through some really, really big shit to get to where you are at the moment. You've had to transform, you've had to shape shift. And this is your kind of twin flame who is going to come in and be doing this with you. You know, you're not going to be on your own. This is this is somebody who is going to work and walk alongside you. Um, literally, it is that partners in crime. How beautiful. Now, let's see um, if we can get any indication here about either timings or what you yourself can do to help the process along to attract this person. Your card has just flown out. So we have... Okay, 1441 unique skills. Life goals, mission, sense of self, honesty, important projects. This is absolutely, this is just so, 
couldn't write it, could you? It's that time of intense self-development. Focus your mind on your craft. You already have what it takes to succeed, but practice makes you a master. It also serves to find your true purpose. Leveling up in your career or business is a priority now. This is literally about something that you have a skill in, something that you are passionate, dedicated to and about, and it's through that that you meet this person. Let us draw more cards. Let's get more information. Can we have a bit more information here, please, for my beautiful pile threes? Any more information about the timing of this, please? May we be granted any more information? Pluto Rebirth. Moon Perception, in fact, actually, I'm going to draw four from this pack. Libra Balance, okay. Dignified Strength, how interesting, you have two cards of strength. Right, I feel that you guys may actually personally, uh, at this precise moment, be working on something. Could be connected to your calling, your purpose, your mission. It could be a, a voluntary contribution, but there's something you are involved in that you feel strongly about with a passion. Whatever it is, as it births, I think, into the world, or as you are rebirthing, emerging, shape-shifting, this is when this comes together. I suspect in a, in a very personal way, you are actually yourselves in a transformational position right now, where you are processing injustices, stuff that's been going on in your own life, working out where you are, who you are, how to be, what matters to you, and really learning to step up in some way. And I feel that this, in many ways, could be very imminent for you. With the moon, perception, Libra balance, I suspect you are really processing, working at being kind of like the best you can be. And I think that's part of your soul's journey right here and right now. And I think it's because of that, because of who you are, the very essence of you, um, that is bringing you into alignment with the kind of stuff, the kind of people that are going to be actively involved in the things that you wish to be involved in. And it's in those environments that you meet this person because you share a passion for something. So in many ways, I think this is really, I feel this is just unfolding and emerging for you. If you're going through some really tough stuff, it would suggest as you process that tough stuff um, and begin to sort of birth into that stronger sense of self that comes from tough stuff, um, again, that will be the point at which you meet this person. Let's get more information here, um, see if there's anything else you can do about this to help the process along. I'm seeing this. Okay, give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership, okay. chemistry and express your love. Okay. What I hear from these cards is that, is, is about not being afraid to speak, actually. Again, speak openly about your feelings. Don't be afraid to express how you feel. I sort of think when you, because you've been through some big challenges, that's really apparent to me through the reading. And um, going way back into childhood, I think there have been um, trust issues um, and, and those have probably been within some of the relationships you've had in your adult world. 
give your relationship a chance. Um, be able to, this is about ex- be, not being afraid to speak, not being afraid to talk about your feelings, to voice your feelings to this person if you feel them. Yeah, stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. This is about really, really holding that vision of, of the relationship that you want and not being afraid to kind of reach out and go for it if you, you know, when it presents itself. May we have additional general guidance and advice, please. Curiosity, learn to be curious about each other. Okay, I might need to move those up a little bit. Be curious. Yeah, don't be afraid to be curious, beautiful souls. Just because you've had a tough time in the past, you know, that does not mean that you can't, um, you can't do this. So talk about your feelings and be open, be available to talk, um, share your feelings. If you have lost somebody, if you are trying to be optimistic about meeting someone new, but you lost someone, you lost a soulmate, and you're thinking, will I ever meet anyone new? I mean, this is suggesting that you actually will. But, and also acknowledging, I think there's a validation here with heaven. Your loved ones are always with you. You won't lose the person you've lost. And I also feel you're getting a kind of a, a validation, actually, from the person you've lost to say that, look, it is really okay to have this. I want you to have this. I want you to be happy again. You know, find someone who resonates with you, somebody who's... Um, circumstances, who's singing from the same page, something you're passionate about. Happiness, yeah. Unlock the doors to happiness. I think this is a really interesting read pile for you because I think, I think, funnily enough, both you and your person have actually experienced significant tough tough stuff, a tough life, a difficult life, big challenges in your life. In many ways, it's why you resonate so strongly because you've both experienced those things. But it's this is not about coming together through that wounding. It's not about feeling like you have a chemistry because you've both experienced tough stuff. The chemistry that really holds you together is the knowledge that you can transform, that you can shape shift, that you can make a difference, you can do it differently. It's your passion and desire to make a difference that is actually what draws you together and brings you to meet. And when you do meet, very important for both of you to not be afraid to have a voice, not be afraid to, um, to speak, not be afraid to own your feelings. This is your sense of self, your honesty. And the moment you start to talk about what you are passionate about and why you're passionate about it, this is that sort of moment where you come together, you talk about something, you meet, and you just realise you're singing on the same page. And it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Part three, I'm just going to draw just a few more cards for you, actually, from another pack, just to sort of wrap up your reading. But I do feel... Um, I do feel that this is, it's the environment that you're going to meet in. Now, let's just ask about timing-wise, see if we can get any further indications as to how soon this might happen. So we have the Four of Cups. We have the Five of Swords. Okay, how interesting. I sort of want to say, and this is going to sound a bit strange perhaps, let's just see what else we get, the Empress, yeah. I sort of feel it's kind of not exactly up to you, but I think because you've had tough times, I think you can get into a mindset where you feel very sort of um, a bit uh, very low uh, about about the fact that something hasn't yet happened. I think you can move this along quite quickly by just being prepared to to speak, to talk, to reach out to people, to sort of to, and, and to believe in this possibility. 
yeah, Knight of Pentacles. Yeah, don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to go to things. Don't be afraid to um, set forth and find the right uh, community group or the right um, project to join or the right, again, something that's resonating with you. Because that's the kind of place you're going to meet. It's amongst like-minded souls. And even if you could join an online group, for example, with the Five of Swords, there are lots of different groups to choose from. And if you join something and it doesn't quite resonate with you, don't be despondent. Um, it just means it's not the right group. Try something else on for size. But I think you can actively join things and join groups of people, yeah, Ace of Swords, that really are of like minds. And that, I think, is where I, I think there is a reaching out to join things, connect with people, whether you do it online, whether you do it in, you know, in a more um, physical way in, in your local geography. That, I think, is what you can do to move this forwards. It's about connecting with people who share the same passions, because that's where you're going to meet. And yeah, it could be online, but if you are meeting online, um, it's, it's again to do with connecting with people who share the same vision. So beautiful souls, you can do something about this is what I'm really hearing. At pile three, this is really exciting. Keep us pasted. I mean, this is a, this is a reading of such happiness that comes to you despite all of the upheavals and difficulties and challenges that you have personally faced. You know, you have worked to be here and this is what you now deserve. That amazing connection absolutely amazing connection that you know that sacred union that sacred marriage you know so this is absolutely beautiful i can't believe this card came out in every pile but how magical is this singing from the same page literally i mean how beautiful pile three this is your reading beautiful souls thank you so so much for joining me today um i post readings on a Friday and a Tuesday and then every Sunday as well I also post a reading where I get in, or ask for immediate guidance for you and messages about the coming week so do check out those readings if you want to make sure you never miss a reading as soon as I upload it and um, if you subscribe and press the little bell icon they should come into your stream thank you for being here it is such a privilege to read for you um, do check out the links in the um, description box below and in the comments um, I'll put them there as well along with the timestamps and all the cards I I've used um, because there are links to things like my uh, my online library which is about emotions and psychology it's a totally free resource it's there for anyone to use and um, that comes from my background as a counselor and psychotherapist so beautiful souls do access any of the information and extras that are available for you and um, just sending you all the love in the world this is sort of what you've been waiting for it's what you've been looking for it's someone who can understand you and you can understand them and from that position i mean i think you will be a formidable pair because because you have a collective voice and you sing from the same sheet and it's from the same page and my goodness me you both recognize that you can make a difference um, in the world and i think you yourselves will make a difference to each other's worlds in the most amazing way bringing happiness and likewise potentially assist others just in the very essence of you being you and being together pile three i am sending you so much love um, beautiful souls thank you so so much for being here huge appreciation and gratitude for all of you tons and tons of love pile three